are back on the Zero Hour. Joining us right now is Diane Rust Tierney, Executive Director of the National Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty. She has made a statement in the wake of the horrific botched execution of Joseph Woods in Arizona. Diane, thanks so much for joining us. Having me. You bet. Now, uh, let me start with this. I mean, it's a complex issue. It should be simple. I mean, either it's moral for the state to to uh, kill a human being, a captive human being, or it is not. But uh, I consider it immoral. But it's a complicated issue politically in that sometimes the opposition to it comes not from the state putting someone to death, but from the state's inability, seeming inability to put people to death in a humane and painless way. And um, you said in your statement uh, after Joseph Woods uh, was executed, Americans have had enough of the barbarism more than, and then uh, a little further down, that's why a growing number of us, more than 90 million Americans, oppose the death penalty, say they oppose the death penalty, a number that has grown significantly in recent years. So the death penalty, more people oppose it than ever, but is it still something that has uh, majority support in this country? It actually doesn't. I mean, I think that what we've seen in uh, the, the polling recently, particularly since we've seen this this uh, spate of, of botched executions, is that public support has gone down. Uh, a Pew Research Center report found that about 55% of the public, just a little over half, and then when you give the public uh, an alternative like life without parole, we see the number drop even below that to around the 40-41. And so uh, the, the, the death penalty does not have the support that it once had. When I worked on this issue um, for many years ago, we had public support at around the 70 and 80 percent uh, level, and, and it really has dropped precipitous, precipitously. Um, we saw uh, after the Troy Davis execution where millions of Americans saw that we have a system of justice that is quite prepared to execute innocent people. Um, that had a great impact, and I think in these recent weeks when we've seen these terrible botched executions, um, we've seen that um, the public support has waned as well. Well, uh, that's good to hear, and I would say that uh, if I were to categorize or simplify, try to simplify reasons to oppose the death penalty, I would say, number one, it's immoral. Uh, and I think the Catholic Church, I know the Catholic Church agrees with me, many religious groups agree, many secular groups agree, so there's the issue of morality. There's the issue of justice. At a time when we're seeing more and more cases, thanks to the Innocence Project and other groups, more and more cases of people who've been in prison for 20, 30 years being found that they were uh, unjustly convicted, that evidence was suppressed, or that they, you know, whatever, that we're seeing people who, at least after losing 25 years of their lives, as someone uh, recently did upon release, that at least they can be released. But if you execute um, an, an innocent person, there is no um, going back on the injustice. So there's the injustice argument. I guess I would say there are four. Um, the third that everybody seems to forget is that aggressive prosecutors, when they prosecute the wrong person, let the guilty party go free. Um, and the fourth is the one that you mentioned in your statement, which is the uh, these inhumane uh, ordeals that are sometimes inflicted upon the condemned person. So with Joseph Woods, um, basically it was a ordeal of, I think, almost two hours, if not two hours. What happened? Well, we don't know all of what happened, and that's why an independent investigation uh, should take place. I think that's what the what the crux of the, the fight was about leading up to his execution. Um, we uh, did not know in advance what drugs um, they were going to use and what exact protocol, uh, but what we think happened is that they used probably the same drugs that were used in other botched executions in Ohio, where the prisoners struggled and gasped for air, we're told, for 20 minutes. Uh, and we also believe it might have been the same protocols that were used in, in, in Oklahoma as well. But, 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 but the part of the problem really is that the states don't know what they're doing. And through um, in, invoking sort of secrecy laws, uh, they are sort of doing this undercover of night, and there isn't the oversight. And so we just have a mess on our hands here with regard to the death penalty. Um, just a couple of points. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the, the point that you're making, it, it's all moral. Whether you oppose the death penalty uh, as a moral question, saying the state shouldn't kill, or 
Uh, it's above our pay grade to decide who should live and who should die. Uh, but we also have a moral question in a, the way that we ap- apply the death penalty. Is it moral to have a death sentencing process that sentences the guilty along with the innocent? Is it moral right. to have a process where the governors are actually behaving recklessly when it comes to actually carrying out the execution? And that's, you know, we assume for political reasons, because there are states where it may represent, like Texas, where it may represent some sort of advantage on their part. We also have the case of Bill Clinton, and I believe his name was Billy Ray Rector or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, this becomes a political issue, which certainly seems moral to me, no matter whether or not, as you say, whether or not you believe a state should have this right. It shouldn't be a politicized process. And then I guess the other piece of it is it's also uh, seems awfully immoral when the people who are subject to the death penalty are very disproportionately minority or in other, uh, you know, subsets of the population suggests that this is not a justly applied process. Is that a fair statement? That's, that is a very fair statement. In fact, you know, the death penalty really is at odds with our other values about the respect for the dignity of the individual, certainly our respect and you know, the importance of equal protection under the law. But let me say something else about this, this question about the politics, because this is what's really sort of on the, the moral question as well. The politics on this issue has changed dramatically. It is not true that First of all, the public is rapidly in support of the death penalty. We talked about that. The intensity and the passion for this issue is not on the side of people who think it might be all right to have the death penalty. The passion is on the side of folks who know that it's wrong and it's time to end. And moreover, the public is not vote against people because they have concerns about the death penalty. To the contrary, the public is looking for leadership that tells the truth that has integrity, that, that is grounded in some kind of values. And what everything that I'm seeing in terms of the people that we're talking to, uh, the people who support our position, is that if there's any political uh, benefit, it's being on the side of the, of the people who are saying we need moral leadership. Uh, so the notion that you have to be for the death penalty, you have to have a zillion executions to be politically popular is just wrong. Well, that's an important point, and it's one I hope more politicians hear. But let me ask you a slightly different question. You're executive, Diane Russ Tierney, you're executive director of the National Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty. What brought you into this struggle yourself? Well, I have to say, it, it started uh, about the way I was raised. Um, I was raised in the Christian faith, and I was raised to believe that there was a, a spark of the divine in each of us, and that, you know, whatever you do to the least of these, so shall you do unto me. Uh, and so we you know, see that there's room for redemption. Uh, we see that, you know, again, as I said, it's above our pay grade to decide who should live and who should die. So that was the moral sort of background that I brought into this work. Um, and it was, you know, it was with me from a, from being from a child. Uh, as I got into it as a lawyer and a policy advocate, you know, I was astounded by the degree to which the facts uh, bore out the, 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 the reality that this is a, a terribly flawed institution. And so I think that my passion for this issue is fueled by my belief that uh, there is value in everyone, even someone who's done the worst of the things, and that what we should be doing as a society is seeking to heal uh, and not to impose more suffering. Uh, and, and quite frankly, a, 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 um, a disgust at the kind of arrogance that uh, government, government officials would uh, assert to decide, you know, who and when and how uh, to kill a citizen. So. Uh, I came into this from my faith tradition, but I have continued to to struggle and fight in this area because I see that the facts are so much on our side. And speaking of the facts on um, on the death penalty, how many developed nations continue to impose the death penalty on their citizens? The United States continues to be uh, in the minority. I mean, I think that um, we are looking at it, developing nations like developed nations like Saudi Arabia and China and Japan uh, among the states that continue to have the death penalty. And the, the rest of the world, the European Union in particular, is just desperate for the United States to to come out on the side of human rights and in the death penalty. And so um, we have some 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 strong allies. And as we know in this world, we have much work to do uh, to to bring the whole world forward in the area of human rights. And so I'm. I am hopeful that the United States can soon end the death penalty, and we can really uh, add our strong shoulders to the overall world, world effort to bring about human rights. Well, I think we've covered a lot of reasons why the death penalty, death penalty doesn't make sense, from the spiritual to the strictly pragmatic to the political. 
and pretty much every place in between. Now, where can people go to learn more about your organization and the work you guys are doing? Well, they should come to our website, uh, which is ncadp.org. Uh, they will learn about our new 90 Million Strong campaign, where we really are reaching out to and mobilizing the millions of Americans who believe that the death penalty is wrong and should end, uh, and find out how you can get engaged. This is going to continue as long as we are not engaged. And so uh, the more hands there are, the more voices there are, the more people educating their neighbors and, and their churches and their neighborhoods, um, the sooner we're going to see the end of the death penalty. Well, I may be reading this into your um, literature, or I may not, but what I hear from you is a two-step process. It begins with a moratorium on all executions so that we can have a national debate about this, followed by, hopefully, I almost said God willing, an elimination of the death penalty uh, from our po public policy. Is that a fair statement of where you guys that, stand? That is a fair statement. Certainly now. we Our position right now is that no more executions should go forward anywhere. Uh, as long as we've seen these horrible uh, botched executions. We don't know what happened in any of these cases, and the notion that anybody in any state should be executing anyone um, at this point is, is an abomination, and so we, that is exactly what we believe. And I would only add to that, as long as there's a chance that we would be executing an innocent person, which the uh, recent uh, releases of long-term prisoners show we have, then that's another reason not to do it. So, uh, Diane Russ Tierney, Executive Director of the National Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty, thanks for your uh, wonderful work, and thanks so much for joining us on the Zero Hour. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you bet. We'll be right back after this. I'm Richard R.J. Escal, and this is the Zero Hour.